Okay, today I'm going to talk about crowdsource maps in education. This is also known as Volunteer Geographical Information VGI. That's how I'm going to refer to it. So to introduce the talk, VGI is a rapidly, rapidly expanding topic. And I'm going to talk about a case study with undergraduate students at Southampton University today. We got excellent feedback, part of the reason that I'm going to talk to you today about it. As a background, crowds, the VGI is a form of crowdsourcing. There's other sorts out there, like Wikipedia is a very obvious example. Uh, specific VGI examples, Hurricane Katrina. Someone put a map together, I'm going to talk a bit more about that later. And the Haiti earthquake. Uh, people digitized roads on remotely sensed imagery and people in the ground could help uh, rescue people from buildings because of that. And there's a very good video at that reference if you'd like to follow that up and see what's going on there. And there's uh, a screenshot from Hurricane Katrina and it was a Google Maps mashup that someone produced and people could put information about friends and relatives they knew about in New Orleans and other people could see what was happening and it was uh, very successful and lots of people used it to find out what was happening and going on and it was a web programmer who did it. So if you're going to do something like this how would you do this go about doing it with students? Well I used Google Earth and I got students to digitize things and then send me the Google Earth files and I collated the results together a simpler way to do it, I had 350 students, but if you have much less many students you can use Google My Maps. And that's a screenshot of Google My Maps on the left there. And you can see that you can invite collaborators, you can invite people to share a map and to add uh, information onto a map. Basically you have to decide what teaching activity you're going to do obviously, and you need to set up the structure of how the work will be split up and how it will operate. And basically you've got to answer the question of who's going to be doing what and where. With my case study I got individual students to digitize polygons and I produced a grid and I told them exactly where they were going to do that. We wouldn't have to follow that. Interesting things I think you could do is you could split the students into groups and get them to work in groups on this and you could also get them to define the grid maybe that would make the activity longer but it would be a uh, more interesting learning experience for them. An important part of this is selling the concept, selling the concept of VGI. I've written a background detail of how I did it at this reference, you can go and look at that if it's sort of interest, but I talk through there as things like for example this screenshot is of a snow map of the United Kingdom that was that came from Twitter and I talked through the pros and cons of VGI and obviously you can see that it appears to be snowing just in London uh, on that snow map and that isn't real it's just that's where everyone who tweets uh, lives or most of them do so out in far west Wales you haven't got anyone at all so I discussed that there interesting thing about VGI it's not perfect the data you get isn't perfect as I just said but it's important to s explain to students that it doesn't matter that it's not perfect and we'll look at the results and discuss that as well so teaching points important teaching points for doing something like this detailing the instructions you've got to get the instructions spot on it really helps if you get them right because students will manage to do so much more if there's no glitches an example of how I got it wrong is I produced this grid that students were then went to found their cell and digitized and you can see if you had one of the cells down there you couldn't actually see the numbers along the top on the side once you'd zoomed in so you'd zoom in to try and start digitizing and go well which is my cell and the students complained about that and had difficulties with it the way you spot these kind of problems is user testing it's really important. I didn't have time to do it because I was coping with all kinds of technical difficulties. But what you do is grab one or two users, one or two typical students, sit down for half an hour, try and get them to do the activity or part of the activity, and you get them to think aloud. So you just sit behind them and say, try and do this, follow these instructions, and tell me what's going on, tell me when you're getting stuck, tell me what you're thinking. And it, it's extremely enlightening it really tells you what you've done right and what you've done wrong so I would, I would very much encourage you to try think and do that. 
to do this kind of activity you don't need to be a huge expert in Google Earth. Google My Maps is really quite straightforward. I think you could get away with just a sort of medium level of, of Google Earth or Google Maps to do it so I wouldn't worry about that. Keep it simple. It's a uh, When you're doing technical things like this glitches will appear whatever you do and you'll just have to cope with them keeping things simple, trying to pare it right down to the absolute bare minimum is a very good starting point and then you can add complexity in uh, as you repeat it in further years and you're, and you're happy it's working but go for simple first is uh, what I would say. Uh, an example I failed because I uh, asked students to map both maturity of trees uh, on that map area and the percentage cover and really it was too much for students to deal with. Maturity was quite difficult to uh, look at because you'd have to look at the size of trees and I, in further years I, I just talked about cover, I just got them to map percentage cover of trees and drop the maturity. Processing, it's very important to get, st uh, when you collated all the information to process it so that students get the idea that them all doing this together helps. Uh, to explain this image, the green grey imagery you can see there, green is basically trees, it's a remotely sensed image, and the grey is bare rock and soil. And we're, we're looking at the area around Mount St. Helens in America. The red and yellow is the students mapping, so they mapped polygons for me. The redder polygons are up to 100% tree cover, the pale yellow ones are less than 20% and things in between obviously. So seeing that bare map, an important part of this is adding annotation. So this is quite a complex image and you need to draw students' eyes to the right bit of it. So I have annotated various bits I'm going to show you. First of all, that's a place mark showing them where the volcano is and what happened here is the volcano erupted sideways, Mount St. Helens erupted sideways, knocking down all the trees in that black circle. So that is my first annotation really showing down where all the trees were knocked down. Another annotation, the white circle, that's beyond the blast zone where the trees survived and you can see the students mapping there is far more likely to be red. And just an example you can pick some really interesting things up. In this area here it's very close to the volcano and well within the blast zone but you can see there's little patches of colour there where students have actually found little patches of trees in their zones. So that's the sort of thing that comes out and that's the sort of thing that isn't actually apparent when you look at the raw imagery here. It's important to discuss consistency as people record polygons in different ways and some of them added lots to their cells and some of them did very few and uh, there was inconsistencies but it's okay to discuss that and go okay this is a disadvantage with VGI. Okay, what feedback did I get from the students? Positive comments. These are the three, three top positive comments. I asked students to put three positive comments each. I collated them together and so 20 students said things along the lines of it's interesting to see everyone's results together, which I thought was nice. This one surprised me a little. 15 of them said they really liked the idea of getting a new skill of how to use interactive maps, so that was nice and 10 of them said it was more interesting than normal teaching so well worth the investment of time I think. Negative comments I've got define the classification better so I didn't instruct them properly in how to split the uh, polygons into different classes and 11 of them said that. That's a teaching detail and, and that's what I'm talking about with user testing that would have come up in user testing had I done it properly. The grid wasn't clear I explained that problem five of them said that again user testing would have uh, produced that and I could have avoided that. So to conclude, I think VGI can form an excellent student activity, I hope I've persuaded you of that. It requires an investment of time from yourself. You've got to really get the detail sorted and it's really worthwhile testing it to make sure that it doesn't fall flat on its face. I also think it's important to sell the background concept, spend time in going this is VGI, this is why it's important and explain, explain the failings of it and provide interpretation. When the collated data all comes together, provide interpretation. But I'd encourage you to have a go at it. It's some of the best feedback I've ever received for a teaching activity I've done.